Hello, this is Molly Reamer with 30 Days of Goddess in Bridges Grove, joining you on a rainy day with this week's mini ritual. As we step across the threshold into cauldron month in August, a month in which we take it all into the cauldron of our own lives, giving ourselves plenty of margins for magic, allowing ourselves to steep, to deepen, to renew, to tend really deeply and wisely to our own nourishment, our own sustenance, and our own replenishment. I am keeping these rituals for August very, very simple. So I have stripped it back to our Herb of the Month card from the Illustrated Herbiary and our Pachamama card from the Story Goddess Oracle because this is the month that we are honoring Pachamama. And so we're going to keep these rituals throughout August really brief and very, hopefully though, very nourishing to allow us time to sink in and steep. So our Herb of the Month card from the Illustrated Herbiary by Maya Toll is Elderberry Cyclicality. And this is absolutely perfect. I was so delighted when I drew this card because the elderberries are ripening right here, right now. So I love how our magic and our, our, yeah, I love how our magic is reflected in our actual lives. I'm teaching a woman runes immersion, or I just finished teaching the woman runes immersion in our goddess magic community. And one of the things I encourage participants there to see to notice is how the runes become alive for us in our own lives and our own landscapes. These are right here, right now. They're not reserved only for the esoteric, for meditations or for, you know, mental explorations. They're literally reflected in our actual landscapes where we are right now. So turning over this card and seeing Elderberry, well, well, I also know that she herself is right here in ripeness this month just felt really perfect, especially since since our theme of the month is nourish and elderberry is a very nourishing plant ally. And so you can make tinctures from elderberry, you can make elderberry syrup, you can, there's a lot that you can do with elderberry. It's an immune system, you know, there's not medical advice, but this is, it's an immune system booster and nourisher. So really clearly and beautifully connected to this month's themes. And like I said, alive in the landscape. So really, I encourage you this month to be aware as a practice, to be aware of how the magical is reflected and alive in the landscape right where you are. It's alive in your real life. And so when we give ourselves margins to see it, we see it, but it's right there. And that is part of the beauty of Pachamama too. Pachamama is right beneath our feet right now. We don't have to seek her or imagine her or dream her or hope for her. She's right here, right beneath our feet. Magic is right here, right around us, right now. It's reflected in the seasons and cycles of our everyday living. So that's my little sermon on elderberry. So anyway, sharing from the Illustrated Herbiary section about elderberry. Elderberry traditionally lives at the center of the garden, telling stories of winter's past and spring's yet to come. Her three faces embody the goddess, maiden in the spring, abundant with abundant with white petals, mother in the summer when the berries adorn her branches, and crone in autumn when her leaves are falling away. Elderberry's yearly evolution teaches you to dance with the closely twined cycles of life, death, and rebirth. Wherever you are in your life, she reminds you that acceptance of life's cyclicality is the key to earning your spot at the garden center. So the ritual suggestion for elderberry is the wisdom of return, which is also really beautiful and powerful. The next book I'm in progress that I'm writing is a companion to replenish and it's going to be called return. And I have my little return. Oops. Can you see it? I have my, oop, oh, 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 oh. I have my return ring as well because return is going to be my word of the year for next year. My new word of the year often finds me in the cauldron month in August and I know with really strong clarity what it is. So the wisdom of return. In the modern world, time can feel very linear. We march from birth to death, forgetful of the ancient wisdom of return. Living cyclically with an awareness of the cycles that form the foundation of our existence can change our perspective in profound ways. Our breath is the first cycle. 
inhale, exhale. So another practice for you is to become aware as often as possible as the cycle of the cycle of your breath, inhale and exhale, and recognize that each cycle offers a place of return, a point of return. I say often that our bodies are the doorways to the sacred and they're sites, they're sites of return, they're sites of magic and sites of return. So next is the cycle of day and night from dawn to dusk and back again. Beyond that is the 28th cycle day of the moon and then the cycle of the seasons, the cycle of the year. So her suggestion, Maya Toll's book suggestion is to choose a cycle to celebrate. You might, for example, greet the sun each day and send her off in the evening, or you might commit to standing outside for a few minutes each night, observing the movements of the moon. A cycle includes the next beginning. So if you celebrate dawn and dusk, celebrate the following sunrise as well. If you are a moon watcher, commit to following the moon past the beginning of her next cycle so you can witness repetition as she comes around again. Two years ago I made a commitment that we were going to watch suns that we were going to see the sunset every night of the year if at all possible. And we really did. We we probably missed maybe we missed 10 days or so of sunset, but in general no matter where we were or what was going on or even if it was Thanksgiving and we were having a big feast with the family, we ran outside and kept a date with sunset. That was part of my plan is keep a date with sunset every night of the year. And uh, so a practice for you is to pay a commit to observing a cycle and in, in whatever way you can keep a date with that cycle, whether it's looking for the moon every day, whether it's stepping outside to greet the new day with a body prayer or an offering, something that helps root you in those cycles of the land and in your life. And so some questions to consider. Do you take the time to dive deep, allowing cycles of repetition to enhance your understanding? Do you allow new knowledge to take root in your hands and your heart through practice? Or do you hold knowledge only in your head? Do you let your knowledge, your wisdom, your hopes, your dreams be expressed in your living, in your physical experience? Do you let that be expressed? And so we all need spaces for practice. So a lot to consider with the beauty of elderberry. And then here we are with our mini ritual with Pachamama. And so this is, if you're a Goddess Magic patron, you get the card packet to print out. This is one I made with intuitively selected additional cards from my other printouts for 30 Days of Goddess. And so an affirmation for this week, for this month, for this year. I am supported. I am supported. Allow that to sink into you. Something that I'm really working with lately is remembering that not everything has to come from me, that I can plant my feet right here on this earth and draw up support from the resources around me. It doesn't have to, I don't have to burn up my own energy to fuel everything. I can draw from the support beneath me. So I am supported. You might want to aff- affirm that to yourself right now. I am supported. And then a word rest. And so we could turn that into an affirmation as well. I take time for rest and replenishment. I allow myself to rest and be replenished by the cycles and wisdom of the earth. I allow myself nourishment and rest. I know what kind of nourishment I need. I rest well and wisely. And then a quote reminder from our 30 Days of Goddess practice materials this month. The holy things we need for healing and sustenance are almost always the same things as the ordinary things right in front of us. So something I also say often is that when we feel a sense of longing, when we feel like we need something, like we're missing something, that is our roadmap back home. That's a doorway of return. And so then ending with Pachamama's poem, Listen, I am of this earth, on this earth, for this earth, by this earth. I am endings and beginnings and eternity. Creation is clay in my hands. I breathe you into being. So may you rest well and wisely this week. May you remember that you are supported. And may you root yourself deeply in the nourish, the plentiful and nourishing and abundant resources and support in the cycles of living and the land, the cycles of living in the land that are right beneath your feet right now. Thanks so much for being here. Keep living your magic. Bye-bye.